إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون ولو كره الكافرون أيها المسلمون اعلموا أن الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وإليه ترجعون ويا أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويا أيها المسلمون اعلموا إن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد فيا أيها المسلمون أوسيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل وطاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى First and foremost we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We glorify Him We call upon Him in His most beautiful and His most perfect of names and attributes We send salam upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And we attest that he in fact was sent as the last and final messenger and the seal of all of the prophets know O gathering of Muslims that whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided there is none that can lead that person astray and whomsoever has not been given guidance know that there is none that can bring them to the straight path I advise you O gathering of Muslims to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that which is truthful speak that which is truthful and good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your affairs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reconcile your actions yuslih lakum a'malakum the word islah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he uses in the Quran when he says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا or rather إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ meaning that when you and one of your Muslim brothers or Muslim sisters have a problem to reconcile perform islah and fix that problem and reconcile between one another Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He's going to do it with your actions وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ and He's going to forgive your sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, fear Allah subhanahu wa fear Him and say that which is truthful and say that which is right and He'll fix your actions. I advise you with this ayah, O gathering of Muslims, and know that the best of speech is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I advise you with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I advise you with the cognizance and the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the longing for His pleasure that has brought you here today. That has brought us here today. Knowing that we have an obligation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us in the Qur'an. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ so, O Muslims who have gathered here for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sit in a position 
in which you are ready to engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit in a position as though you are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not be lazy. Do not sit on the wall if you don't need to. It is from the adab of sitting in the khutbah and, and being at the Jumu'ah that you sit properly. And any of the circles of knowledge, it is from that, it is from the adab of that that you sit properly and be attentive. As to what follows today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He advises us in the Quran regarding our duty to Him and regarding our worship to Him. And He advises us in the Quran that the believer should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is between fear and hope. In a way that is between fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a way that is thinking about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And between that, a way that is longing for the hope and thinking about the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That the people, they arise from their bed, from their sleep, and they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between fear and hope. Hoping for Allah's mercy and fear of wronging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear of transgressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's boundaries. And fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyuhal Muslimun, O you who believe, O oh, you who say that you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, think about your life. Think about what you have endured and engaged in in these last months and in these last weeks. And think about the way people are acting and reacting. People are scared. People are confused. People are worried about their health, their family. People are worried about the economy. People are worried about so many things. And the Muslims too are worried. But my question is, there's no doubt that you are worried about your health and your family and the way that the country is being run. And you're, not, and you're worried about your bank account. There's no doubt in that. We know that. The question is, are you worried about your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, in the Quran regarding the day that you will meet Him, وَخْشَوْ يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ And fear the day that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخْشَوْ يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And fear the day that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. What did you prepare for it? What did you prepare for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's no doubt that in this day and age we are constantly reminded that your life could be taken from you at any second, at any minute, at any time. What have you prepared for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu he mentions in a hadith, Ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun minan nas, as-sihhatu wal-faraq. That there are two bounties and two favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
which many people lose out on. As-sihha wal farah Health and free time. These things people lose. And it is only after they lost one or both of these things that they realize that they should have made use of it. Those of you who are at an age where you're working and you're trying to provide for your family and you're hustling every day, this is time that you're putting in. This is time that you're putting in to your job, to your family, to make money, to make a better life for you and your family. How much of that time is being spent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of your own soul? Those who are past that time or those who are in a different time category, you may not have the time, you may have the time. Some of the older individuals, you may have the time. But you wake up on Friday and your back is hurting, your knees are hurting, you have this health complication that every day is something. And so now you want to go to the masjid, you want to do, you want to feed the poor, you want to do so many things, but the health is not there. The ability to do is not there anymore. And the ones who have the time, how do you balance your time? Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran with regards to the balance of your time. He says, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا That wealth and children, your family, are from amongst the adornments, they are from amongst the pleasures of the dunya. But what is better? وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ What is better is the good actions that you can do and that you should be doing. Because on that day that we talked about, يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The day that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are in the court of رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ He's not going to ask you how much time you spent working? How much money was your salary? Rather, he's going to ask you regarding your deeds, your actions. Did you leave off your salah until later because you were working? And you prayed the salah late because you were working? And some, some people might think that's not a big deal. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْكُوتًا So the one that leaves off their salah and prays it late, they've left off this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, that the salah is upon you at a prescribed time. When you could have given, you said, no, I'm going to do something else, I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to do something for that, that's only going to help me in the dunya. And you took that money and you did that with it. You had the ability to go for hajj and you left it off. You had the ability. At one point in your life you had the ability but you left it off. No doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to call you to account for that. And then you have to give an answer. O oh Muslims, I urge you and I advise you and I advise myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think about what you have prepared for the day when you will meet Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look to what you have prepared for tomorrow. Look to what you have prepared. 
when you look at what you have prepared for your future, is all that you see. Your investment opportunities and your retirement and the house that you paid out and the car and this and, that, and everything of the dunya, is that all you see? What can you, when you think about it, what can you say to yourself? This I have prepared for the akhirah. This I have prepared for my meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another point that I want to get to with regards to this. When I say what you have prepared for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have to be something big. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best of actions? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says, in different versions of the hadith the short answer that the prophet ﷺ gave to the man he says adwamuha wa in qalla small actions however what sets these actions apart actions that are good and they are small and you are able to do them consistently and constantly in a longer version of this hadith in a longer narration of this hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he explains to the man and he says, do as much as you are able to do outside of the fara'id, outside of what you are commanded and uh, aside of what is an obligation upon you. That you have to do. What's an obligation upon you, you have to do. Outside of that, in Islam we are only advised to undertake what we are able to undertake. So, no doubt that praying in the night is good. And some of the Salaf, they used to pray for long hours. The Prophet Wasallam at the beginning of prophethood, he was commanded to pray half of the night or more than that. Or a quarter of the night, and, and the list goes on in, 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 the, in Surah Al-Muzammil. However, this may not be something that we can do. This may not be something that we can do. Something that you and I can do maybe every single day, we donate a dollar. Doesn't have to be to the masjid. You donate a dollar. Someone that's poor, someone that's needy. Every day you're able to do this action. This might be better for you than trying to undertake something that you cannot do. Those actions that are small, but they are constant. These will be better for you. Another thing that the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions, very beautiful hadith, that there are two words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves them. They're beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these words, they are light on your tongue. And they are heavy on the scale of good. And these words, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. So easy is it to put up and to stack up good. So when we say, what have you prepared for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when you are thinking and, and you are fearful of that day when you will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't have to be something difficult for you to prepare something for in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not have to be something difficult. Rather, you have to be willing to do. Rather, you have to be willing to put in effort and work. The same way that you struggle in the dunya, the same way that you know that you have to make money so you go out and you get a job. The same way if I ask you if you want Jannah, you'll tell me yes. So do something. Do something for yourself that will gain you something better in the akhirah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في, في القرآن العظيم يوم تجد, يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت من خير محضرة وما عملت من سوء تود لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا ويحضركم الله ويحضركم الله نفسه والله رؤوف بالعباد الله عز وجل he says beautifully in the Quran on that day when each and every soul when each and every individual will be presented with whatever good they had done whatever good they had done they will be presented with it and that individual they will wish that their bad was kept far away from them they will be presented with their good and they will long for and wish for their bad to be kept away from them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you about this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells you about this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forewarns you about everything that you will meet and it is up to you to take that advice or to leave it and so we began the khutbah talking about worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between fear and hope and so we, we talked a good bit about the fear. At the same time, do not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran in Surah Al-Zumar, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله قل يا عبادي الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Say to the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have transgressed against themselves. They have done wrong do not despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no doubt Allah will punish and he can punish but don't despair in his mercy and verily his mercy is more than his punishment what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and wants from us wants from me is that we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us that we ask for Allah's help and guidance and forgiveness Allah is ready to forgive inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that he'll forgive whatever he wishes you will commit sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive and you'll commit more sins than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. Allah did not create us thinking that we were perfect. He did not create us without knowing that we would commit sin. Prophet Sallallahu he, he's reported to have said in a hadith, Kullu bani Adam khatta, wa khayrul tawabun. That every son of Adam, every single one of the offspring of Adam are sinners. And from amongst the best of the sinners are those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. So you want to know how to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Final point and then we'll close. There is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which talks about a group of people who these are a special group of people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. These are a special group of people that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the dunya. And these people are Ahlul Qur'an. These are the people of the Qur'an. These are people who they read the Qur'an and they ponder over its ayat and they memorize its verses 
and they recite and they have a relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the people these are a special group of people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is very easy something that we can this is something physically that we know that we can do we're not saying you have to go and put down money and go, go for hajj if you don't have the means. We're not saying that you have to donate excessively. We said that there are small actions that are feasible for you to do and for, for me to do. Reading the Quran, an extra five minutes for the day, putting it in, in your day, five minutes, increase it to ten minutes, increase it, increase it, increase. stay constant with it. Stay constant with the action that you do, even if it is a small action. Stay constant with these actions and we will become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وقوموا إلى صلاتكم